the blame for the fires of West Maui is falling upon Hawaiian Electric, who knew as early as four years ago that there was a risk of fire due to their own negligence in maintaining power lines. But they did nothing. Hawaiian Electric, who is owned by Vanguard and BlackRock, has been shifting their focus to clean energy. And in order to build back better, the old system must first be destroyed. And so the power was left on to feed the flames. The warning system on Maui is one of the most advanced and maintained warning systems on Earth. Residents are accustomed to monthly tests, but on the day of the fire, no sirens went off. There were no warnings. The director in charge of this warning system was at a FEMA disaster seminar in Oahu as the fires were devastating the people of Maui. According to documents obtained by HNN Investigates, Ndaya was in Waikiki at the Alohalani Resort attending what was scheduled to be a three-day FEMA disaster preparedness seminar called the Pacific Partnership Meeting. A receipt from the hotel shows Andaya checked in last Monday, a day before the fire started. That same receipt lists a departure date of Wednesday, August 9th, the morning after flames reduced the Haina town to ash. According to Tuesday's agenda, the day wrapped up with a networking reception at the hotel's Longboard Club from 5 to 7 that evening. The same time people were running for their lives, trying to escape flames that engulf the town. When asked if he regretted not sounding the alarm, he said no, because he was worried that the people would run into the fire. Do you regret not sounding the sirens? I, I do not. Had we sounded the siren that night, we were afraid that people would have gone Malka. And if that was the case, then they would have gone into the fire. But instead, they burned to death at home including an untold number of children who were home alone that morning because of a school cancellation. The water wasn't on, fire hydrants were dry, and the deputy director of water resource management, who was named an Obama Foundation leader, refused to release water for the West Maui fires until it was too late. He says that in order to share water, Hawaiians need to discuss equity. Really, my motto is always like, let water connect us and not divide us. Like we, we can share it, but it requires true conversations about equity. Without any warnings and without any water, the people tried to flee, but they were stopped by the police who had orders to keep people from escaping. I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm under orders to keep them here. And I said, the fire is is right around Safeway. It's going to hit Front Street. You know, these people got to get out of here. And he said, I'm following order. No way. And I, so I just kept walking. I, well, maybe he knows something I don't. The Maui chief of police was the incident officer at one of the biggest cover-up operations in U.S. history, the 2017 Las Vegas shootings. No comment. No comment right now, guys. No comment? I'm talking to the chief, sir. Why doesn't you want to speak to the people? Only to a camera. Residents are not allowed to leave unless they get a permission slip from the federal government. But the government recently decided to shut that option down. Hey, I just been informed that we are shutting down this placard distribution as of now. While the fires burned, a book was published about the entire event. The book blamed climate change and was written by a Dr. Miles Stones. The definition of milestone is an action or event marking a significant change or stage in development. Hawaii is being usurped by the same billionaires pushing for the World Economic Forum's Great Reset. They have been planning on turning Maui into a testbed for their artificial intelligence smart grid. But the people were in their way, so they burned them out. Maui will either be a major milestone for the ruling class or a line in the sand for we the people. The federal government offers a one-time payment of $700 to each family that has lost their home. And the governor of Hawaii tells reporters that the state plans on acquiring the land. I'm already thinking about ways for the state to acquire that land so that we can put it into workforce housing, to put it back into families, or to make it open spaces in perpetuity as a memorial to people who were lost. And if it wasn't for the local community, the survivors would be left alone to die in the ashes of their neighbors.